Okay, I just killed the biggest buck that I've killed on my farm so far. I actually wasn't going to hunt today. I've hunted probably 10 days straight in a row. Decided uh, without seeing very much, I'm going to take a break and sleep in. I woke up at about 6.30. I checked my phone and I had pictures of all kinds of bucks chasing does. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this another try before Thanksgiving. I'm going to get my stuff on and go out here. I went out here because they were chasing does pretty hard. As soon as I sat down in my spot, I took my call and I did a doe bleat. And then after the doe bleat, I did a combination of buck grunts with my hand hitting the ground, pretending to be a buck running after a doe. And uh, no more than a minute later, my buck come running down over the hill, ran through a bunch of thick stuff. I had to fire off a couple of shots to get my bullets through it. And I ended up hitting it in the neck and he went straight down. So we got a nice buck laying back there. I got my tags filled out and I got to get the side by side down there to go get him. about 50 yards down over the hill here, so we're gonna go and get him. There he is. Not too bad. Already got him field dressed. Nice 10 point. I called everybody this morning and I was so shook up. I called Phil as soon as I shot this thing. I said, I got a big eight pointer. He's like, that is a 10 pointer. You realize that? Like, oh, yeah, it is. You said eight pointer. You were too excited. I was so excited. This is Look. my uh, biggest buck on this farm for sure. Um, definitely my widest buck that I've ever killed. Normally my bucks are nice and tall. Let's see how wide this sucker is. It's a great looking deer. I'm guessing probably 19. Oh, wow, he's a good 20. Really? Yeah, he's a good... Oh, my gosh, he is. 20 and a quarter, actually. Sweet. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty wide deer. Holy cow. Now the hard part. We got some pretty steep hills here in Kentucky, so dragging this deer. Oh, it's never easy getting these things out of the woods. I'll help you, babe. This is not easy. <laughs> We're dying. Okay, ready? Work on your cardio, kill a deer and drag it. <laughs> this is good cardio. And I'm a runner. Antlers make nice handles. Go. So I got out of the woods because we had anticipated that there was some chasing going on over on that hillside. So I get out there and the first thing I wanted to do as soon as I got set up was do some calling to make sure if there was any bucks in the area, see if they could get them into us. So I started out with a combination that I've used for years. And not all the time are we successful. Um, it's blind calling when you're calling and you don't see any kind of deer, but when you have a deer out there, you know, you could also call in a deer that this way. This was considered blind calling because we wasn't sure if there was a buck nearby. So the first thing I do is I put it on doe, uh, and I'm not, I don't do a mature doe. I kind of do a younger doe because it sounds better as a bleat. And you go, okay, give it one once or twice. Um, keep them separated by a good 20 to 25 seconds. Okay, so now I take it back down to the buck and I do go a mature buck because the young buck here to me sounds like a mature doe. So I'm gonna to go to a mature buck. And this is the extinguisher, by the way. And then you're gonna go, combination, we're gonna use the leaves here. This is pretend that I'm out in the woods hunting a deer. And this is what you did today that brought this the deer. This is what I did today that brought in the deer. Okay. Now 
that's all I did. I waited about 10 seconds and literally this buck came running down over the hill. So simple as that.